so glad to see every one of you here this morning. And this song is, is it's, it's a prayer, basically. We understand that it's a choice. It's a statement that we can make this moment. I surrender all. And all it means is not that it's not that you're giving up on life. Is that what you're saying, I'm no longer going to just keep this pressure on me. I'm going to give it to God. Lord, help me. I surrender. I give up trying to do it on my own. There's nothing more freeing than surrendering your will to God. It, it, remember when, when Jesus taught, uh, taught the disciples to pray? He says, teach us how to pray. And he says, first he starts off, our Father art in heaven. And he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth the way it is in heaven. What, what he was teaching them to do was surrender their will to God. And when you surrender your will to God, it's okay. I'm not going to do my way no more. I'm tired of stressing out. I'm try, tired of trying to figure this out. I'm try, tired of trying to fix it. Lord, I surrender. I want your will to be done in my life. I want your plan to be done in my life. I am done doing it my way. And, and when you do that, you surrender your life to God's plan on your, for your life. And God's plan for your life is amazing. It's a plan for good and not evil. You have hope in the future. It's a plan of peace, joy, rest. Does anybody want some rest? You know what gets in the way of all that? Our own will. I, I am so glad you're here. Everybody that's tuning in online and all of our campuses. Um, we're starting a new series, and it's called 1728. And it, it says this, be a disciple and make a disciple. And we're going to go into that, even if this is your first time here. This is what we're talking about, uh, that each one of us, are a disciple or a student or a pursuer of some, some type of lifestyle. Uh, you could be a disciple. I, I remember, uh, right, I, I've seen this happen in our city. Uh, there's, there, this, uh, actually San Bernardino and Fontana have been known for the Hell's Angels, right? They ride through the city and just bring hell to the city, right? And some of you guys were Hell's Angels, right? But the, I've also seen this devil's disciples there's a bike club called the devil's disciples and 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 the idea is what they're saying is we're proponents and we're imitate this type of lifestyle and there's been a lifestyle that you've been imitating and that you've been kind of leaning towards and you've been becoming more like but I'll tell you this every lifestyle that's not a discipleship lifestyle of following Jesus leads to destruction leads to pain, leads to addiction, destroys your family, destroys your health. Thank God that there's an alternative to being a disciple of the devil and being a hell's angel that we could decide, you know what, I'm tired of this. I want to learn the better life. And there is an amazing life that you could have. As a matter of fact, Jesus said this. I've, he goes, he, goes I, I, the, the, he said this, the thief, the thief has come to kill, steal, and destroy. And it, it, Jesus introduces that there's a thief out there and this is what he's saying there's a devil out there that's trying to rip you off trying to kill your dreams trying to destroy your life and he uses sin to do it he goes but I've come I've come to give you a rich and satisfying life I've come to give you the life you've been looking for I'm telling you you could be depressed in this room full of anxiety full of stress there's an alternative lifestyle and that's following Jesus and I pray that you get it today. So I'm glad. Anybody here for the first time, just raise your hand real quick. I'm not going to, you're not going to have to, thanks for coming today. Thanks for coming today. Is that Brandy over there? Hey, Brandy. Oh, the, you know, it's so cool. You know, um, Brandy came to my door. It was yesterday. <laughs> and she just came to sell some solar. By the time we were done, we were praying and had a, we had to just pray. It was awesome. Now she's here today. We're so proud of you, honey. For being here. How many know that, that God loves all of us? He has a plan for us. So glad you made it. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for us having an opportunity to study your word. And we want to learn your ways. And we want to, because you said, come to me, all that are tired and worn out. I'll give you rest. And many of us have not been able to rest. We're even in our sleep, there's nightmares and it feels like there's torment. It feels like we can't even just think anymore. Our, our thoughts are racing and fear and anxiety and stress and problems. And you said, you're tired. 
you're wore out, you're stressed out, come to me. Let me give you some rest for your soul. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that today we could find rest in, in you, peace in you, joy in you, restoration in you, new beginnings in you, victory in you. Thank you, Lord, that you love us so much that you came and you died to give us an, and resurrected to give us a brand new life. And every one of us can have a brand new start today. I thank you, Lord, for your love. Every one of us can be forgiven. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Teach us, Holy Spirit, today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good to see you guys here. Uh, I, I want to talk about being a disciple and making disciples. And the purpose of this teaching is to get us to commit fully and re-inspire us to the great commission that Jesus gave um, his disciples. And his commission was, what I want you to do is to be disciples, but I want you to make disciples. I'm going to make this real simple. And all it means is passing on your faith to the next generation. Passing on your, what you've learned to the next generation. There's nothing greater that you can do in this life than pass on your faith to your children, pass on your faith to your friends. After you leave this earth, there's only two things that are going to matter and two things that you can leave behind. One of the things that you can leave behind is the things that you create or you build. Let's say you built a house, you can leave that behind. If you created a business, you can leave that behind. If you created a ministry, you can leave that behind. If you wrote a book, you can leave that behind. If you created some music, you can leave that behind. You have to make sure that you're spending time not only doing things, but also creating what you've been meant to create on this earth. The second thing that you can leave behind is the people you developed. The people you develop. So a part of your life needs to be involved not in just doing. A big part of your life needs, needs to be in developing. Jesus or God did not give you children just to raise them, feed them, and clothe them. He gave you children and he gave you people in your life for you to impart into them a lifestyle or develop them. And to develop them, it's going to take some work. It's going to take some intentional effort. This week, I've been watching a, a Netflix special documentary. And the name of the documentary is called Sprint. And it's talking about the fastest runners in the world. And there's two actually powerhouses when it comes to the 100-yard dash or the 200-yard dash. And it's the U.S. and Jamaica. And these two teams are constantly battling out who's going to be the fastest people, fastest girls, fastest guys in the world. But they kind of go through all the training. And, and what they found out, of course, Jamaica is a small little nation. It's an island. And the reality is they're producing some of the fastest runners in the world. And the reason they're producing great fast runners is because they got some, not only do they have talent, but they have some great coaches that know how to develop the potential in the runners. And the same thing with America. So some of, these, some of these runners, if they don't have the right coaches, they won't develop their potential. And it's just like having children or having people in your life. Have you developed them to help them reach their spiritual potential, their life potential, and most of all, make sure that they're ready for eternity. So the, mo the greatest thing you could ever do is pass on your faith to the next generation. My mother passed away a few years ago. Um, she got pancreatic cancer, uh, but she did something. She built something. She developed someone. She developed me and my brother. She passed on her faith. It took a lot of work. It was intentional. We'd have Bible studies every single week in our home. But now my mom has moved on, but what she has built and who she's developed continue to continue to develop. We're still reaching people because she developed a disciple maker. She developed a people developer. So we need to develop these skills. And I want you to know this truth that you could only develop people at the level you develop. That means if you don't develop at another level of spirituality, another level of skill, if you don't learn how to develop others, this is a problem. You'll never be able to help others develop, number one. And the other thing, you'll never help others. You can't help others develop others because you don't know how to do it. So it's, it's a really important idea that, uh, and commission that God has given us. And, and I want to talk a little bit about, first before we dive into it, of stats about, about modern day Christians or Christianity. Um, Christianity is the most prevalent religion in the world. As a matter of fact, in, 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 Amer in the world and America, 63% of the total population of America claim to be Christians. 
that's approximately right around 210 million Americans claim to be Christians. Um, last month, we, we, we saw, I really believe that we're, we're in a revival. That means people are realizing, I've tried the drugs, I've tried the drinking, I've tried the partying, I've tried the plastic surgery, I've tried everything this world has to offer. I tried Jack Daniels, I tried his cousin Southern Comfort, I tried everything. I tried the weed, I tried the crack. I mean, some of you guys have gone real far. I tried, I'm mean, usually gone way far, right? I've tried men, I've tried women, I, I've tried everything, right? But the problem is I'm still empty, I'm still depressed, I'm still full of anxiety. And the world has found out they've done it their way and they've pursued all the pleasures of this world and they're finding themselves still empty because there's only one person and there's only one person that can save you and make you whole and his name is Jesus Christ. And last month, we as a church went on a soul winning mission and our goal was to see 3,000 people get saved in 30 days. Well, I look at the numbers, we have 3,100 people that got saved in the last 30 days. But now we have a problem because this is a question, 3,100 people got saved. That means there's 3,100 potential new disciples. And this is the question, who is going to take care of them and who's going to invest in them and who's going to develop them and who's going to take them underneath their wing and spend time with them and develop them? That's a question. That's discipleship. So we've got to think about this because the church can only grow as far as we have people that can lead, disciple, and train others. We are in a revival as in the world. The population is projected, right? A Christian population is projected to go from, I want you to understand this, in the world, there's 2.52 billion people that claim worldwide to claim to be Christians. And they're saying this year alone will grow to 2.63 billion this year. That's a 1.8% growth rate. By 2050, is it expected to be over 3 billion people claim to be Christians. But, uh, but, and it's good, but there is a problem. There's a problem. Uh, um, 80, look at 88% of Americans own a Bible, right? Um, and 80% 80, 80 of them believe the Bible is sacred. But there's a problem. The majority of Christians read their Bible only four times a year or less. That means we got Bibles, we just don't read them. It's kind of like our gym membership. We got gym membership, but we don't go. Right? There's a problem. Only 26% of believers read their Bible on a regular basis four times, four, four, four times or more. Four times a week or more. Sad to say, only 4% of Christians in America possess a biblical worldview. That means that only 4% of these Christians are actually getting their values from the Bible. Most of them are getting their values from society. That means if you ask them what's right and wrong, they actually go to their own opinions. This is what I think is right and wrong. Or they go to society to determine what's right and wrong. Or their friends or the schools. But they're not getting their biblical worldview and values and morals from the Bible. How many know that's a problem? It's a problem. Um, um, 82% of all Americans believe, check this out. That, that this statement, that God helps those who help themselves is a Bible verse. If you ask them on the streets, God helps those who help themselves. Is that in the Bible? This is what, what's going to happen. Over 80% of the people say, yeah, that's scripture. It's not scripture. That's just a saying. See, more than half of all Americans agree with the statement, there are more ways there are more ways than one to, or there's many ways to eternal life. That means there's other paths to eternal life. Jesus is one of the ways. He's not the only way. But Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one gets to the Father. No one gets to heaven. No one is saved but through me. 
Now, why is that? Because Jesus is the only one that died for our sins. He's the only one that conquered death. Every other way, so-called way, and every other so-called God, every single one of those men, every single one of those philosophies, every single one of those leaders that led those movements, every one of them are dead. Just like when you die, you're dead. But Jesus not only died, he resurrected from the dead. He's the only source of true eternal life. Let's talk about Gen Z, the majority of Gen Z, those born from 1999 to 2015, do not affiliate themselves with any religious identity. The percentage of atheists are double of the rest population in Gen Z. That means the next generation that's coming up are non-believers. Now, why are they non-believers? They're not non-believers because they're evil. They're not non-believers because they want to be unbelievers. They're non-believers because they have not been trained, they have not been discipled, and they've never heard a Bible teaching. So this is what happens where there's no discipleship, when there's no training, when there's no intentional passing on of our faith through Bible studies to the next generation, we produce a society of atheists. We could complain about our society, but the real problem is not our society. The real problem is a church. This is the problem. We failed to pass on our faith to the next generation. We've now become a group of people that attend church on Sunday like going to the movies. And what I mean by that is we come to be entertained. We come to feel good. We come, we come to hear, but we don't come to get involved in the mission of heaven. And the mission of heaven is you learn it, you apply it, and you teach it to somebody else. We got to get the word of God from the church into your homes. How many believe that? God is good. Now, 82% of Gen Z, this is what they say. They think this, that the church is a place to find answers to the meaning of life. Those that have actually had an encounter with church, they say, it's a good place to find the answers to life. 82% of them also say that the church is relevant, 77% say that they can see themselves at church. They would see themselves if they were just exposed to it. This is the idea is that the world is not negative about the church. We're just not speaking. They're ready for change. They're depressed. They're full of anxiety. They're struggling in their relationships. They're addicted. They're suicidal. And they don't know how to get out of it. So what they do is they only turn to the alternatives they know. And then maybe I need to drink more. Maybe I need to smoke more. Maybe I need to leave my wife or leave my husband. Maybe I need to move from this city to another city. Maybe I need more money. And they're finding out no matter what solution they pick, none of them is fixing their internal problem. There's only one that could give you that new life. And his name is Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so let's talk about two foundational truths about making disciples. Say it with me, two truths about making disciples. Number one, truth number one, God has given every believer the commission to make disciples. Every believer has an assignment. The assignment is to make disciples. So this is a question. Have you made any disciples? Have you passed on your faith to anybody? If you were to die now, did you develop anybody or pass on your faith to anyone? Because if you didn't, you wasted your life away. And how, how bad would it be that you didn't make disciples, but you made uh, disciples of the devil? That means the, 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 the curse and, and the addictions that were passed on to you, you've literally, you've literally embraced them. And then you embraced the lifestyle and you passed it on to your kids. You passed it on to your next generation. And if you feel, mad, I've made some disciples for the devil. I got good news for you. We could turn that around right now by making up my mind that I'm going to start making some disciples of Jesus Christ. It's going to make some work, but it can turn around. Look what the Bible says in Matthew 28, 18. It says, Jesus came up and said to, to them, his disciples, who said, who's the one to speak in here? Jesus is speaking to who? Them. Who are, who's them? The disciples. He says, all authority and all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And Jesus is now, this is the first time we're really seeing him 
like really declare his authority. And he's saying, it's not just I have authority. I want you to understand the highest authority in the universe is speaking to you. Imagine having a conversation with Jesus and he just says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me and I'm ready to tell you something. And, what, and now this conversation happens after Jesus died, resurrected from the dead, and he met up with his disciple on the mountain and he's given them last minute instructions. Now, these instructions are so important that he doesn't ascend into heaven until he meets with his disciples and makes sure that they get this commission or these instructions and this command. We need to get back to the original mission of Jesus Christ on earth. The church was not just created to make us feel good. The church was not a cr created for us to visit on Sundays and live like hell Monday through Saturday. The church was created so we could become disciples of Jesus Christ and then make disciples of Jesus Christ in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our cities, in our villages, in our nation. All authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And this is what he says, go, therefore, and make disciples. What I want you to do, believers, I want you to make disciples. I, and we're going to cover what a disciple is. Don't miss it. What a shame that you made sure that your kids were good at sports, great grades at school, and after they die, they go to hell. You prepared them for this life. But you did not prepare them for eternity. You did not prepare them for real life. You did not prepare them to face the obstacles and temptations of this world. Disciples of Jesus Christ. Go and make disciples. Disciples are made. They don't accidentally happen. Of all nations. That means all, kinds, all people. Help the people. This is what a disciple, being a disciple, making a disciple means. Help the people learn of me. So making disciples incorporates teaching. Someone say teaching. Now, it's intentional teaching. That means you need to have a time in your family, in your schedule, in your home throughout the week that you're actually spending time teaching people what you're learning. That's the only way to make disciples because the word make means, the word make means teach. Say it with me. The word make means what? So you cannot make disciples unless you're teaching someone through your example and through your teaching. So you teach two ways. It's how you live it. And then, and then you teach another way through your discourse, through your declarations, through having intentional Bible studies. In our home, we have Bible studies uh, as I grew up, you know, every week. Every week my mother was having Bible studies. And these, these Bible studies uh, it, we, we were great. Uh, she would also ask me or have me go out into the streets in my hood and invite all my friends. So many of my friends got saved or introduced to Jesus Christ and are living for Jesus now and are in heaven because of a Bible study that we had in our home. I met my wife in a Bible study. Praise the Lord. The love of my life. As we were having this Bible study, making disciples, there's a disciple that came through that door and she was a fine disciple. And this is what God is saying. When you're busy taking care of my mission, I'll add everything to you. And this is what's happened. We're so busy fixing our life and set on the mission of the Lord. And if you'll get busy on the mission of the Lord, God will fix your life. If I had a husband, I would serve God for real. And God says, you can't even serve God single. What makes you think you're going to serve God with a husband? That was for somebody. Help people learn of me. Believe in me. It's really simple. If people do not are exposed to the teachings of the word, your kids won't believe. Your neighbors won't believe. But this is what happens when the word of God is taught. When the word of God is taught, it creates believers or disciples. It's a natural byproduct of teaching the word. People start hearing it and they start believing in it. 
Bible studies. God wants you to have Bible studies. God wants you to have a circle around you on a weekly basis where you're learning this stuff and passing it on to somebody. And if you're not doing that, this is what the idea is, you're not making disciples. Be careful that you're not so busy that you're not even teaching your kids about Jesus. And the truth is they're not saved because you never taught them. You cannot depend on the church to do all of it. Here, we're just here to reinforce what you're doing at home. I know I'm not getting a whole bunch of class because we're thinking right now. Help the people learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words. It's really teaching. Here's, here's how you make disciples. You don't teach people just to hear the word. You teach people to obey. Someone say obey it. Now, uh, you cannot produce obedient disciples to the word of God when you're not obedient. It's impossible for you to produce somebody you're not. This idea, the more I become like Christ, the more effective I am at leading people to Christ to become like Christ. We want them to hear the word and what? Obey. Now, if you're a compromiser, the best you could produce, you could have disciples that are compromisers. Serving Jesus is not just saying I'm serving Jesus. Serving Jesus is saying this. Being a disciple is saying this. I learn the word and I apply the word and then I teach the word. And I'm an example for people to follow because I'm a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Look at my life. Every day is becoming more like Jesus in thought, in attitude, in character, and in action. You should be able to say eventually, this, follow me as I follow Christ because I'm following Christ. Imitate my life because I'm an imitator of Christ. We got to stop excusing our sinful lifestyles and then excuse it and justify it because all you're going to do is excuse Jesus and the power of Jesus for your kids to see. The Bible says in the last days, there will be a group of people that have a form of godliness but they, have, but they deny the power. I mean, the power that can make them like Jesus. You know, there's a lot of people claim to be Christians. But just because you claim to be a Christian doesn't mean you're a Christian. Just like if you're in a, in a garage doesn't make you a car. Why well, go to the way? Just because you have a membership, join membership. But make sure that you don't have membership here and you don't have a membership in heaven. Help them to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is how we make disciples. We present the good news of Jesus Christ and we just say, look, you have an opportunity to accept them as your Lord and Savior and become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Receive forgiveness, receive eternal life. This is the life you've been looking for. And after they accept Jesus, the next step is let's baptize them. You know what baptism represents? I'm 100% in this thing. Some of you today, you need to give your life to Jesus and take the next step. And not just be a believer, but get sold out for Jesus. Get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptism represents a burial of your old life. And then when you come out of the water, it represents I am now a new creation, a brand new person. I used to be a disciple of the devil. I used to be an addict. I used to be a, come on, I used to be, I used to fiend for all kinds of stuff. I used to be involved as a, I was a prostitute, I was this, I was that, but now I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm a new creation. I made up my mind to follow Jesus, and he set me free, and he made me a new person, and he gave me a new identity. It's a choice. Are you guys still with me? Teaching them. Look what it says. What? Making disciples is about teaching them. I, I, I bet now my mom passed on this pattern and this method of disciple making to me. And this is what's happened to me. For 35 years, I have had a Bible study every week for 35 years nonstop. I've been making disciples for 35 years 
And this is how this church is what it is. And now what I'm producing is disciple makers. We have a goal. We have a goal as a church. Say we have a goal. Because understand this. You will never hit a goal you never set. If you don't set spiritual goals for yourself, you'll never accomplish spiritual things. So we as a church, we're saying making disciples is really important. That means developing leaders that can take care of others and teach others is important to us as a church. We just don't want you coming to church and remain a baby for the rest of your life. There's nothing wrong with starting out like a baby but, because everything starts out in baby, as a baby. But there is a problem that five years from now you're still a baby. You guys understand that? There has to be finally spiritual maturity. Celebrate your growth, but aim for growth. And we as a church, we want to develop mature believers in this church that are at least committed to making disciples. Right now, we have in our church 726 DG leaders or discipleship group leaders in our church. That means that we could take care of a, a few thousand people. But if we could get 1,728 people that sign up and say, you know what, I'm tired of just moseying on through this life. There has to be more to this. I want to fulfill purpose. I want to leave a legacy. I want to know when I die that I've le left some disciples of Jesus Christ that I just didn't live and consume the air and consume things. By the time I'm done with this life, I'm going to leave some developed disciples of Jesus Christ that can develop others to follow Jesus. This is what we need in America. We need more disciple makers. So our goal is to have 1,728 discipleship group leaders. You're going to be challenged today to sign up to be in a discipleship group and be part of a group that's discipling you, part of a group that's taking care of you and you're taking care of others, part of a group where you're being challenged and developed into a leader that can actually teach the word to somebody else. You're called to be a leader. You're called to be a student, but you're also called to be a teacher. Don't get stuck on just being a student. Develop your life to the point that you could develop somebody else. And the level that you develop is a level that you can reproduce. If every Christian was like you, what kind of church would we have? Let's think about that. Would the gospel just end with you? If you're one of the 11 disciples that were left, would we actually reach the world? Or, we could, or would we be just so consumed with our everyday problems, our everyday life, our nine to five, that we never share Jesus with nobody and we're like the majority of Christians that read the Bible four times a year. Some of us, it's not you, but some people use their Bible as a decoration for their coffee table. There's some Christians that actually think wearing Christian jewelry does the job. And there's nothing wrong with wearing a cross, but there is a problem that's all you do is wear a cross. You never talk about the cross, you never tell anybody about Jesus, and you never share your faith outside of this place. It's time to bring the Word of God to our homes. I got five girls and I got five disciples. Why? Because we've intentionally lived this out. Obey the word, teach in the word. They, they see me studying the word. We have conversations about the word every single day almost. This is important. Teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you. This is a, the pattern. I command you, you teach them. Say, say it with me. God commands me and I teach them. God's commands. Now. We've come to a place in Christianity that we take the commands of God as a suggestion. We say, you know, that's good for you. No, 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 no. It's not just good for me. It's good for you too. God doesn't speak in suggestions. He doesn't speak with, you know, it would be nice if you do this. He says, do this. Forgive them. Repent of your sins. Obey this. He goes, teach them to observe everything I've commanded you. And I am with you always, remaining with you perpetually 
regardless of circumstance and every occasion, even to the end of the age. That's what it's saying is, if you'll accept this assignment to make disciples and pass on your faith to somebody else, to be a learner, a plier, and a teacher. Say it with me. A learner, a what? Now, and a te- you don't have to know everything. You just have to know what you know. You're not responsible to teach the whole Bible if you only know if you only know four scriptures. But if you know four scriptures, you have a responsibility to whom much is given, much is required. You're responsible to pass on those four scriptures. And when you learn 10 and 20 or 30, or you start learning the Bible, then you have a higher responsibility to pass on what you know to somebody else. Their life depends on it. Their eternity depends on it. Their lifestyle depends on it. Come on. Their purpose depends on it. We got to now become public. I am I'm not just a disciple. I am a disciple maker. Come on. Can I hear an amen on that? Don't you want your life to be powerful? Amen. I love it. You know, Brandy, I'm so glad you came. She kept the word. I, I'm not... I mean, I, I mean, she comes to my door, and, and she's selling solar, which she does a great job at it. And by the time we were done, the Holy Spirit hits her. I don't know what they're planning to do. I'm not singing right now. <laughs> or they're trying to sh- sh- shut me down. I ain't going to shut down because of the organ. We're not done with this message yet. <laughs> hey, Amen. Come on. But, but Brandy, uh, it's so cool because God touched her at the doorstep. And she goes, man, what's going on? I go, and she didn't know I was a pastor. I go, I'm telling you, baby, God loves you. I'm a pastor. And that's God's spirit upon you. And it's so wonderful because this is what happened. When she was there and I was there, there was somebody else there. It was the Holy Spirit. It was Jesus Christ himself. She had an encounter with God at a doorstep because Jesus is saying, when you become a disciple maker, I will be there with you no matter what the circumstance is. I will be there comforting you, provided for you. My miracles will show up. They will be proof. See, when you're making disciples, Jesus is with you. His provision is with you. His wisdom is with you. His peace is with you. His joy is with you. His miracles are with you. His victory is with you. His angels are with you. His favor is with you. And what God is saying, when you say yes to my my commission to make disciples, I will be with you perpetually. That means I'll never leave you. And everywhere you go, people are going to know that you're not alone. I'm going to show up and I'll do what you can't do. I will touch Brandy right there at the door because I love her so much. Come on, let's give God some praise because when we're involved in this, God's going to be with you. Come on, does anybody want to see miracles happen in your life, power happen in your life, people's lives be transformed because you're a disciple maker. I love it. And truth number two. We cannot say we are true disciples of Jesus Christ if we ignore his command to make disciples. I'm a disciple, but I don't make disciples. And Jesus' great commission is that you pass on your faith to to others. He commands you to learn of him, tell others about him, and then teach others. There are some of us watching, and there's some of us in this room that you're a Christian, but you're depressed. And the reason you're depressed is because the devil has been doing everything that he can to stop you from fulfilling the Great Commission. He's telling you when you become better and you become and you overcome this and your marriage is better and your kids start behaving and you got time, then you'll start making disciples and the devil's lying to you. You make disciples right now. I know you're not completely done. I'm not completely done, but I'm going to tell you how far I've come. There was a day I was lost. I was broken. I was addicted. I didn't have no purpose in my life. But Jesus came in and what he did for me, he could do for you. You're not responsible to tell somebody else's story. Just tell your story. And that's why you have to become a good student. A disciple is a a student. A disciple is one 
that has devoted their lives to following Jesus and devoted their lives to start talking like him, thinking like him, acting like him, becoming like him. That's my, that's my mission. My goal as a disciple of Jesus Christ is to become more like Christ. I want to become more like him so I can be more effective at leading people to him. So I can be more effective at passing on my lifestyle to them. Because my lifestyle has become Jesus' lifestyle. Jesus' lifestyle is my lifestyle. It's all the same. We should not be looking more like our mothers or our fathers. We should be looking more like Jesus. We shouldn't be looking more like our society. We should be looking more like Jesus. People need to see Jesus, and they're going to see Jesus in you. Let's finish this. Look, in John 8, 31 says this. So Jesus said to those who believed in him. He said to those who believed in him. Say it with me. Believers. Who is he talking to? He's really talking to disciples. He says, if you obey my teaching, you are really my disciples. So you can't say, okay, go make disciples. I ignore that and be really his disciple. It's only if you obey his teachings are you truly his disciple. Do you know some of the things that Jesus is going to tell you are going to be hard to obey? Right? You guys got that? But if you're a real disciple, then you do what he says no matter how hard it is. If you're a drug dealer and that's your source of income, God's going to tell you repent of drug dealing. You are no longer a drug dealer. You are now a businessman. But if you don't let go of that drug dealing, you'll never get the business I have for you. I got something better for you. But by faith, give up on the drug dealing. I'm done. This is my, that was my last transaction from this day on. I am not a drug dealer. I am a man of God. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I am done with that lifestyle. And when you make up your mind, God will release his provision. Right? You can't be no OnlyFans Christian. I'm a Christian, but I do OnlyFans. God told me that's how he's going to provide for me. That's the devil told you that. That's my source of income and God has blessed me. No, God has not blessed you. The devil's blessed you. He's t but this is what happened. What can a man or a woman give in exchange for their soul? Are you literally going to give your soul up for an exchange of some money? And God is saying, if you'll just be willing to give it all up to follow me, I'll give you everything that you ever desired. Come on, I'll set you free from the depression. I'll set you free from the addiction. I'll set you free from your past. I will heal your broken heart. I'll make you into a brand new person. I will prosper you because I have an abundant life for you. But I need you to step out in faith and be willing to give it all up and be my disciple. Amen, come on. If you obey me, my teachings... You are really my disciples. Now, as we end this introduction to the series, because all we do is the introduction today. And we've covered two things. Is that God has given every believer the commission to make disciples. It starts in our homes. And the truth number two, we cannot say we are true disciples of Jesus Christ if we ignore his command to make disciples. Next week we're going to cover two steps to becoming a disciple maker. Just two simple steps and we'll cover that next, this, this next week. But there is an action step. The first thing is today, make a decision to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You've got to be tired of being a disciple of whatever lifestyle that you've been actually projecting or emulating or imitating. You know, we all want a lifestyle. I remember when I was in junior high, I was a surfer for a little bit. And I never surfed a day in my life. But I, I was in Torrance and there was a lot of surfers. And we used to, I don't, some of you guys know this, we used to wear OP, Ocean Pacific. And also we wore vans. And I had a skateboard. But I didn't know how to surf. I learned some little tricks on a skateboard. But, but then when I came to Fontana, I became a gang member. I came a cholo for a little bit. What's up, Ese? Where you from? Sur Fontana, rifamos y que vato. I went to the I went to the swap meet, bought myself some khakis, had my mom iron them, 
And I bought some chanclas at Thrifties. Like, you don't even want to fight in these things because they just, they just come right off and they wear out in four days anyways. I even bought a little belt that had G on it for Garcia, orale, right here. Right? But then, then there was a time I was a punk rocker for a minute. I, I was involved, like, we were doing mosh pits, even in church. I was like, ha! Ah! I remember when, they, one, when I brought a, a, a Christian, <laughs> I brought a Christian punk rock group, and we're doing a mosh pit in the church on youth night. One of the, one of the deacons of the church came in, and he goes, this is sacrilegious, stop it. I go, jump in, homie. And I was, <laughs> Let's jump in. We're going to go surfing. <laughs> it, was, it was all over the once. All I'm saying is, is that every one of us want to be part of something and we're trying to find our meaning, and we're trying to find our identity. And some of you have, uh, have a false identity. You're not who you're created to be, and you're still searching, who are you? So when a new group comes around, you're finding affinity with that group, and you're trying to fit in with that group. But the truth is, you got to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. You're not going to become a disciple of Jesus Christ without making a choice. I am done living that life of depression. I'm done living that life of addiction. I'm done living that gangbanger life. I'm done living that drug life. I'm done being angry. I'm t- done trying to be the player. I'm done trying. I'm, try- I'm done trying to be the gambler. I'm done. It's up to you. The other thing you could do is sign up to join the DG. There's going to be a, a QR code up here. Sign up to be part of. You're going- our goal is to get everybody involved in a small group. Now, now, being in a small group is just like I was. I was developed there. There's a place to build lifelong relationships. There's a place, place to be take, take care of one another. You know, when you're sick, who's going to visit you? Your inner circle group that you're part of. And if you don't allow people in your life and you don't allow, you don't, they're not in their lives, this is what's going to happen. There's something going to be missing in your life. And I'm telling you, it's going to be scary because some of us are scared to get hurt because we've been hurt so many, so many times. You're thinking, ah, I don't want to be vulnerable and join a small group. But there's going to be people just like you that need you and you need them. Join a small group where you're going to be discipled and you're going to be trained to become a leader. And I'm telling you, some of you guys are missing that. That's why the depression is there because you're missing purpose in your life. It's not going to get fixed. It's, it's time to get purpose. Number, number three is, is make a decision that I'm going to be one of the 1,002 people that, are going to, that are going to, I want to sign up to be a disciple maker and lead eventually a discipleship group. We're going to train you, but nothing starts until you make up your mind. I was trained and we want to train you. And I tell you, if you do this, your life's going to drastically change. Because once you become a, de- a people developer, it's the greatest skill you could ever develop. And there's going to be a demand on your life. You're going to learn how to win and you're going to help people win. You're going to learn how to overcome and you're going to help people overcome. You're going to learn how to restore your marriage. You're going to help other people restore your marriage. Every challenge that you face is going to be opportunity for you to grow and develop and overcome and get skill so you can pass on your faith to somebody else. Come on, you're going to learn the word and teach it to somebody else. There's a demand for your, for your life when you become a disciple maker. So sign up. Now, you sign up where you're at. I want to become a disciple maker. I want to lead a DG. We need a thousand people. Because right now we got, God is ready to send us a whole bunch of people that need to be trained, loved, nurtured. And we're asking who's going to take care of them. Because if we don't have leaders that take care of people, this is what's going to happen. They're going to come. And the 3,000 are going to come and the 3,000 are going to leave because they were never taken care of. They were never loved. And they're going to say this, I went to the way we were reach and they never took care of me. That's going to be their story because they're expecting maybe the pastor to take care of them. And I, I, and I would love to take care of them. But the reality is there's only one of me. If I had to visit everybody that's sick in the hospital, I would never sleep a day in my life. But if you do your part and I do my part, we could take care of thousands of people, 20,000 people a week. We could take care of them. We could do thousands of hospital visitations, thousands of prison visitations, thousands of Bible studies all in one week. And also, you could sign up to be a member of the church. There's going to be another opportunity next Sunday. Or you could sign up for Holy Warriors. It's the classes. This is how you begin your process. And that's going to start next Tuesday, I mean Tuesday the 10th and Sunday the 15th. The idea is you'll never be a disciple or disciple maker without making a choice to do it. But if you want to see that full life that God has for you, because I promise you, if you'll just say yes to the, and accept me as your Lord and Savior and your master and your teacher, and you learn to live like me, 
and you learn my word and you give your life, life to this purpose, I will have you transform people's lives everywhere you go. You're going to fulfill your purpose. You're not going to miss out on one thing I have for you. The best life that you've ever imagined is going to be in this mission of making disciples. It's going to heal your relationships. It's going to heal your mind. It's going to heal your body. You're going to start seeing miracles happen in your life. You're going to start prospering in your business. You're going to start prospering in everything that you touch because you're meditated and you're involved in the mission of God. It all starts with becoming a disciple. You know what that means? Who's mentoring you? Because there's a lot of people that pay a lot of money to be mentored by somebody successful. If you could just teach me how to do business like that, I'll pay you. I'll pay you. Please teach me. If you could teach me how to have a great marriage, I'll pay you. If you could teach me, I'm willing to invest my life. I need to learn how to overcome this. Can you teach me? And this is what God wants you to do. He wants you to learn it. He's going to teach you. He's going to guide you. And I'm telling you, some of you guys are getting ready for the greatest part of your life when you accept this call. Will you be my disciple? And I'm going to train you how to be fishers of men. You're going to be my disciple, but I'm going to teach you how to develop people. Develop your family. It's going to be crazy from here on out. The best part of your life is ready to happen now by you accepting a call that God has in your life. Come follow me. All you have to do is say yes. Let's all stand up. Let's give the Lord a hand because he's a good God. I'll dismiss in just a second. So glad every one of you are here. I'm going to dismiss in just a second. Next week come, I'm going to teach the second part of this teaching. The second part of this teaching is this. The second part is two steps to becoming a disciple-making leader or person. Two steps. Now, it's very important because we're going to start training you for purpose. That's what my mom did with me. That's why we're still here making disciples all over the world. This is what we're doing. And we're believing that as we develop these 1,728 leaders, God's going to put us on the map worldwide. And I believe our church is going to be start a revolution of disciple making throughout the world. But we really need to hit this milestone together. Because once we hit this milestone, people are going to say, how did you do it? How did you disciple 20,000 people a week? And I said, I, we've developed people. Not just to be disciples, but be disciple makers. And they've accepted the responsibility that I'm not just being, I'm just not a student, but I want to be a teacher and I'm saying yes to teaching. This is your day to do that. Give your life to Jesus, be a disciple, and then commit. I want to be a disciple maker. Maybe you don't have the faith to do it today, but I'll tell you, don't, like, I, I, I got to wait till I'm ready. Right now you're ready. That's why you're here. It's time to just say it. We'll train you. We'll teach you. All you do is say yes. So before we leave this place, I want to give you an opportunity, the greatest opportunity of your life. Where Jesus is saying, I'll mentor you. Will you follow me? I'll show you how to live. I'll show you, to have pe I'll show you how to have peace. How to have joy. I'll set you free. I'll heal you. I'll come live inside of you. My spirit will come live inside. I'll make you a brand new person. You can be forgiven of all your sins. I want to give you a new life. I want to give you eternal life. Some of you right now, if you were to die today, you don't know where you spend eternity. I, I saw a video the other day. A guy that was driving 160 miles per hour on a freeway. And, and he didn't realize it was a, a dump truck. And he was trying, he's changing lanes and he went right underneath the dump truck. Died instantly. And, and the reason I just said that because the first thing I thought, not that, I thought he's dead. And then I thought, where is he? Did he go to heaven? Was he a disciple of Jesus Christ? Was he born again? I don't know. If he, I don't know. Well, he was speeding. Well, that doesn't mean he wasn't a Christian because I speed once in a while. <laughs> you do too, so. Christians sometimes speed. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but getting to heaven wasn't going to be whether he was at the speed limit of 55 or his whole life. What's going to get him to heaven is faith in Jesus Christ. And one day you're going to breathe your last breath. You're going to die. And were you a disciple of Jesus Christ or, or do you represent something? Were you more of a disciple of a baseball team, a basketball team, the Raiders? And you're more of their disciple than you were of Jesus Christ. I'm not saying don't be a fan, but be careful that you have more identity in a sports team or a neighborhood or a lifestyle than you do in your relationship with Jesus. That's all that matters. I'm not offering you religion. I'm offering you salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. So I'm going to count to three. 
And I'm going to ask you, if today were your last day on earth, do you know where you spend eternity? Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? I've said yes. When he asked me to be a disciple, I said yes. I put my faith in him. Jesus saved me. Jesus forgive me. I'm tired of living my own way. I'm tired of being a disciple of the devil. I'm done. I'm tired of the anger. I'm tired of the jealousy. I'm tired of the adultery. I'm tired of, I'm tired of the lust. I'm tired of the perversion. I'm tired of the emptiness. I'm tired of the nightmares. I'm tired, I'm tired of the violence. I'm done. Something has to change today. And this is how it changes, changing your leader. Jesus loves you. He goes, come follow me. Change your life. I'll give you what you're looking for. I'll give you peace that the world can't give you. This is what Jesus said. This exact words. I'll help you. No longer do you need to do this alone. Some of you feel like you're so alone. And God says, you are alone, but I'm here. If you just let me in your life, I'll get rid of that loneliness. I'll be with you for sure. I'll never leave you. I love you. One. When I say three, I want you to raise your hand. Or maybe you're a Christian. You need to recommit yourself to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ. I've been Christian by name, but I'm ready to surrender everything today. Today has to be changed. I'm telling you, nothing changes until you make a choice. Two. And when I say three, I want you to raise your hands all over this building and say, I want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want a brand new life. And I want to be able to mentor and develop people for the rest of my life. I want to become the best version of me. That I want to become what everything I was created to be. I need some help with that. When I say three, I want you to raise your hand. It takes a real man or woman to say yes. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this bill and say, that's me. I want forgiveness. I want eternal life. I'm not sure. Proud of you. 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 I'm not sure if I die right now. I go to heaven. Something has to change today. Come on. Anybody else? I want change in my life. I want to be set free. I see the hand. I want a new beginning. I want a new start. Come on. It takes a real man or woman to say I'm done living the way I'm living. Come on. It's time for me to be the father I'm supposed to be. The mother I'm supposed to be. The person I'm supposed to be. It's a choice. When I say, this is what I want to do. Everyone that raised their hands, do me one more favor. Will you give me the privilege? I love you. I love you. God loves you. We love you. Give me the privilege of praying with you. I want you to leave your seat and I want you to come up. There's no speeches up here, but I, this is a sign of you leaving your old life in those seats. Come on. And take an action. I'm leaving the addiction behind. I'm leaving the anger behind. I'm leaving the poverty behind. Come on. I'm leaving the loneliness behind. I'm leaving the depression behind. Come on. Come on. Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there? Ask your neighbor. You want to go up there? I'll go up there with you. That's disciple making. Come on, make the invitation. You want to go up there? Go up there with you. Come on. There's somebody needs a little push. This is going to change your life, change your family, change your children. No matter what you've done, no matter how much you've messed up, you can be forgiven. You can be set free. You can have a brand new life. Come on, come forward. Come forward. If you raise your hand, come forward. Take the next step. Overcome your fear. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, disciples are being made. Just like in Jesus' day. Come on, just come up. Just come up. Just come up. Just come up. Come on. Come on. They're still in the aisles. Come on. They're still in the aisles. Let's make some room here. We're going to need some. Come on. We're going to need some more disciple makers up here. We're going to need some more leaders up here. Next week, we're talking about lifestyle. You know, come on. They're still coming. There was something that Jesus said. Jesus in the Bible talks to some religious leaders. Religious leaders, people that thought they were better than others. Because they were super religious. And you know what Jesus told them? He goes, you're like, you're like your father, the devil that was a liar from the beginning. What he was saying is, you know who your daddy is? It's the devil, not me. Basically, he's, your, he's the one that's discipling you, and you look just like him. You talk just like him. Because whoever's discipling you, you sound like and you begin to look like. I can tell what lifestyle you're associated with because it shows up in your thinking, your conversation, your talking, even your dress at times. But I, I got good news for you. From here on out, you're going to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, the greatest mentor in the world. He loves you. He'll never give up on you. He believes in you. When people give up on you, he won't. He loves you. Okay, you're going to be receive forgiveness of every sin you've ever committed, doing it your way. You're going to receive freedom today. When God forgives you, he forgives you and he forgets about it. It's done. 
He loves you. I love you. We love you. Man, you don't even know me. How you gonna love me? God, this, is what I, this is what I'm gonna say. The reason I love you, because the one in me loves you. So it's just him loving you through me. That's all. This is your day. This is your new beginning. Now when God forgives you, please, forgive yourself. Stop living under a guilt trip. When God forgives you, he really does forgive you. Not like people. People say, I forgive you, but we'll see. God says, I forgive you, and that's it. I cleanse you. And then you know what he does? He restores you. Do you know there's choices that we made that has really messed up our lives? And God says, I don't care what's messed up. I'm a fixer. I can fix your life. I can restore your life. Come on, I can make it for lost time. It's not over. Your dreams. Come on, God said, I'm going to resurrect your dreams. And all those ideas that you had, we're going to bring them to pass together, okay? And then you're going to pass it on to your family. So this, I'm asking you, be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Make sure you show up to church every week. Give us a year of your life coming to church. And I guarantee you, you won't recognize you a year from now. You won't even recognize you like, man, I've changed. Because you've been mentored. You've been transformed. But you got to show up to school to grow. This is school. How many of you already learned some stuff today? Like, I went to school today. Life school. We love you. Okay? So every Sunday, put it on your schedule. I'm coming to church. Every week, I'm coming to church. And then start bringing people with you. That's disciple making. Hey, come to hear this crazy Puerto Rican preacher. He's crazy. Right? You'll relate to him. Right? And the reason they'll relate to me, because I'm just like them. <laughs> You're just like them. We're sinners that have been saved by Jesus. Come on. I ain't better than nobody. He just saved me. I'm just telling you. I'm crazy without Jesus. Right? Let's pray. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Give your life to Jesus. Sign up for the next step. Get baptized. Sign up for Holy Word 1, 2. Sign up to lead. We need 1,002 leaders. We'll train you. Just say yes. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much that you came to the earth and you died on the cross and you, and you suffered to pay the price for the wrong I've done. I was a sinner. I was the one that was guilty. And you took my place. I believe you rose from the dead. Today, I repent of my sins. I'm done doing it my way. I choose today to be a disciple of Jesus Christ for the rest of my life. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me for all my sins. Set me free from all bad habits, addictions, depression, anxiety. Make me new. I open my heart and I ask you, Jesus, come in and fill me now with your Holy Spirit. I am now saved. I receive the free gift of eternal life. And devil, get out of my mind. Get out of my life. Get out of my family. I follow Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. We love you. We're going to pray with you, get some information from you, and help you get to the next step. Thank you, church. Have a wonderful, wonderful Labor Day weekend. Um, but show next Wednesday, this Wednesday, we'll have church right here. Also, 7 o'clock, full service. And then also next Sunday, let's now come. Let's, have, let's start, let's start a, a, a record now. One, two, three. Oh, man, I showed up to church ten times in a row. Things are happening in my life. Let's start a good record. We love you guys. Have a great, great afternoon. We love you. Remember this, if God is for you, there's no one going to come against you. you. need prayer? Come on up. Let's everybody sign up here.